These people fled Hodeida due to the war and many of them escaped to this camp where they have to continue to endure suffering. They have no flour, no rice or sugar. They have nothing here. Leave no one behind. It was a pledge by governments and aid organizations just three years ago at a UN summit on sustainable developments. But a new report by the Red Cross thinks that promise is being ignored. This year, more than 130 million people around the world will have needed humanitarian assistance. Less than 100 million will get it. While many believe that's down to a lack of funding, the problem may be far more severe. So, what's the solution? Well, the Red Cross believes they may have the answer. So who better to ask than the head of the organization, Francesco Rocca. Francesco, good to have you on the Newsmakers once more. So before we look at solutions, help me understand the problem. Tell me why the system is broken according to the Red Cross. But first of all, you have just uh, recalled the numbers, uh, and I, thought, I think that sometimes numbers talk for themselves. Uh, but then look at the facts. Uh, uh, here is not a question of, of money, which of course uh, are extremely important, uh, but so we have uh, other, uh, other uh, important factors that uh, the governments and the donors are not taking in consideration that we have radically to change the, the, the system. First of all, uh, we have to uh, understand that there are people uh, out of reach in many places of the world. Think uh, about the protracted crisis in the areas of conflict, because the conflict uh, sometimes with, with the humanitarian organization do not have the physical access, which is something uh, uh, that is uh, extremely, uh, extremely important uh, to reach. And this is something that must be remembered. The respect of the Geneva Convention, the respect of the humanitarian organization to reach uh, the, the those who are at this moment uh, it's very difficult uh, to, to stay in contact uh, with us. Then, uh, for example, just this is another example, uh, in, in Congo, um, where uh, we are responding and try to respond to the Ebola crisis, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, people living there which is completely scared uh, by this uh, terrible disease, of course, uh, mm -hmm. and even our, our teams uh, sometimes are under attacks, so it's extremely difficult to reach uh, those, uh, those in needs. Third, uh, and this is something uh, that in this moment uh, we are living in America, uh, the, the, the migrants uh, which are out of scope, uh, uh, apparent, but only apparently. This is people who is in uh, need of humanitarian assistance, uh, and we must need as humanitarian organization to take care of them. Uh, we cannot for, uh, forget uh, their needs uh, and uh, to take care uh, uh, of, uh, of what they do need uh, during, uh, during uh, the, their travel and their journey. And this is, uh, is not interfering uh, with the policies of the government, it's only about the mm -hmm. human dignity and to take care of them. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of factors. We can also recall uh, another another aspect: uh, those uh, who are uh, out of seeing. Uh, so this is uh, extremely difficult uh, uh, because sometimes they are uh, like invisible. Think only about uh, those uh, who are living in the fast-growing uh, urban slums, uh, and this is another aspect on which the humanitarian uh, organization mm -hmm. uh, in this moment have um, a lot of difficulty. So which is uh, the answer sometimes is uh, is about uh, uh, the access of the humanitarian uh, and the biggest humanitarian organization. But what we are trying to stress is the importance of the role of the local uh, humanitarian actors. The local mm -hmm. actors uh, are extremely essential to deliver the aid. Okay, so let me take one specific real-world example. You mentioned uh, Congo. Let me look at the Democratic Republic of Congo. Many UN agencies have said that there's a humanitarian crisis in the Kasai region of the Democratic Republic of Congo, right? So you have mm -hmm. government troops, you have armed militias. It's basically two on two, two different groups against each other, or four, four groups, two versus two, and civilians are suffering. Now, at the height of the conflict, in the heart and the heat of the moment, these guys don't respect the Geneva Conventions. They don't care about your 2018 World Disasters Report. How are you going to help those people who are suffering there? You're not going to go there with a gun as the Red Cross, right? So how are you actually going to get aid to those people without being political? Uh, uh, this is uh, a, 
uh, a reason more to stress the, the, the factor and of the importance of the local actor. Mm. So sometimes uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the armed group at local level, they do not rely on the international organization. This is unfortunately, it's a matter of fact, but it's, uh, it's uh, something that is growing. If you look not only at Congo, but you look uh, at the recent experiences that we are having in Nigeria or, in, or uh, like a master of all these experiences uh, in Syria, this is something that unfortunately has happened. The, the importance of the local actor, the importance of those who are strictly connected to their communities uh, and the trust that they are able to to um, enable, and this is something that uh, that uh, could be the right answer in the in the in the right moment. Uh, and this is a reason more uh, to try to invest because only a short percentage uh, in 2017, the 2.9, if I remember correctly, but something like that, uh, around three percent of the total funds of the humanitarian assistance went to the local actors. Uh, and this is something that we have to change. We have to radically change the attitude. We have to radically change uh, the way we approach the, 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 the crisis and the protracted crisis especially. Mm -hmm. So, in, in a nutshell, less top-down and more bottom-up, is that what it is? Fantastic. Exactly. This is something that uh, it's, uh, it's extremely important. The local actors, they do know their culture, they do know how the people love, the tradition, the religions. Uh, it's extremely important to empower uh, the, the... And this is also, it helps uh, to, to grow what is uh, now, it's uh, this new world uh, that we are starting to use in the resilience, uh, the importance of the resilience. Investing in the local actors uh, is, uh, is the right answer in times of crisis, uh, but even to prevent uh, sometimes the consequences of the, of the, of the crisis. Uh, think about the consequences of the climate change uh, and other mm -hmm. several factors. We have to invest uh, in, the, in the local communities. Okay, so you've got this big idea. You feel that the system is imperfect right now and it's fundamentally broken in many ways. You want to change it. Give me a timeline. Are you optimistic or pessimistic? Uh, and sort of, you know, how many years are you giving it in order to try and implement this globally? Look, as humanitarian, I must be and I am optimistic. Uh, they say well, you cannot be a humanitarian without being optimistic, uh, looking at the human nature. Then, uh, as an outcome of the, the World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul in 2016, as you remember, uh, the, the humanitarian community and the governments decided that two um, 2030 is the deadline mm -hmm. to move uh, till the 80 percent of the humanitarian funds to the local actors. We think uh, that uh, we should speed up because uh, what we are experiencing on the ground is this, this phenomenon is growing, it's growing, and the lack of access uh, is, is also growing. So this is something that we should, uh, we should work to implement the ability of the, of the governments and uh, to, to fund the local actors uh, at all levels. Francesco Rocca, always a pleasure talking to you on the Newsmakers. Thank you for joining us.